Um, anyway, we're gonna we're gonna move on from this story though to banning uh, TikTok. This is democracy because uh, there is a bipartisan attack on TikTok because it's a Chinese app and uh, it really has nothing to do with like data privacy or anything like that. They just don't want China to do it or they don't want a Chinese company to be so dominant in the space. So that's where we're at. We're going to take a look at my girl, Amy Goodman, the queen, the goat, and how Democracy Now! is covering this. And then I'm going to talk a little bit more about the insanely broad Restrict Act that could ban much more than just TikTok, uh, leaving it to the Secretary of Commerce to ban whoever the fuck they want. So, Mr. Chu, would TikTok be prepared to divest from ByteDance and uh, Chinese Communist Party ties if the Department of Treasury instructed you all to do so? Uh, Congressman, I said in my opening statement, I think we are need to address the problem of privacy. I agree with you. I don't think ownership is the issue here. With a lot of respect, American social companies don't have a good track record with data privacy and user security. I mean, look at Facebook and Cambridge Analytica. Just one example. This comes as a bipartisan group of U.S. senators has introduced the Restrict Act, which stands for Restricting the Emergence of Security Threats that Risk Information. It also kind of sucks that, like, TikTok drops some fucking loads into the pockets of a lot of uh, progressive or progressive-adjacent congresspersons who are advocating for the right things in this circumstance to stop, like, a wholesale ban. But, you know, it, it kind of muddies the message a little bit. Information Communications Technology Act, which would allow the federal government to potentially ban technology from countries the U.S. considers to be adversaries, including China. Insane. Meanwhile, Democratic Congress member Jamal Bowman of New York has been a leading opponent of a TikTok ban. So we're talking about free speech for everyday Americans. We're I get why he's doing, but it's insane to hear a major CEO advocate for regulations. Oh, the, the fucking CEO of TikTok? Yeah, I mean, he's advocating for regulations because I don't think it would ultimately happen. I think he knows that it won't happen, and he has to say that because otherwise it's like he can't simultaneously stand against regulations and, and then uh, sit there as they blame him for all of the fucking problems. Talking about small business owners who use TikTok to grow their business. And my question is, and we're going to pivot to the other part of the conversation, why the hysteria and the panic and the targeting of TikTok? As we know, Republicans in particular have been sounding the alarm, creating a red scare around China. Congressman Bowman has been joined by New York Congressmember Alexandria Casio cortez who laid out her concerns in a video she posted on TikTok after opening her first account on the app. Usually, when the United States is proposing a very major move that has something to do with significant risk to national security, one of the first things that happens is that Congress receives a classified briefing. And I can tell you that Congress has not received a classified briefing around the allegation. He's because the government is coming for them for following the normal privacy standards. Like, for fuck's sake, didn't the government pressure U.S. social media companies to build them back doors for them and share information they collected? They did. The real reason why this is happening is not because... Uh, TikTok is doing anything out of the ordinary. The real reason why this is happening is because TikTok is doing exactly what every other social media company is doing, but better. And they are not owned by a Silicon Valley uh, uh, tech giant. That's it. It is American commerce protection. That's it. Nothing else. They're doing this specifically so that they can, one, further restrict whatever fucking application they want on the internet, willy-nilly, because this is a good way to, this is a good vehicle for that kind of restriction implemented by the federal government. And two, so that they can get TikTok to be sold to an American. That's it. ...of national security risks regarding TikTok. So why would we be proposing a ban regarding such a significant issue without being clued in on this at all? It just doesn't feel right to me. For more, we're joined in New York by Julia Angwin. I do think it's pretty funny, though. I do, I do think it's pretty funny to see, like, all these libertarian guys and gals with, like, the Gadsden flag on their fucking iPads and shit running around going, absolutely unacceptable. We have to restrict what's going on on this fucking platform. <laughs> Look at them. They're showing guns. It's like, are you serious right now? Are you fucking joking? Like, you, 
You're mad that they're like gun posting on fucking TikTok? What the fuck? Investigative journalist formerly with ProPublica, contributing opinion writer at The New York Times, where her latest guest essay is headlined, How to Fix the TikTok Problem. We last spoke to her in 2014 about her book, Dragnet Nation, a quest for privacy, security and freedom in a world of relentless surveillance. Julia, welcome back to Democracy Now! It's great to have you with us. I mean, it was amazing to see this absolute bipartisan, almost consensus in the particular hearing um, that the CEO of TikTok was uh, being questioned at, being grilled and demanding that TikTok um, be sold to a U.S. company in order for it to be saved. Uh, talk about what Bowman said, what AOC has said, and what you think are the major concerns here. Thank you so much for having me on. It's great to be here. And I have to say, it was amazing to watch Congress finally taking privacy seriously, but only for one app, right? So I um, have been writing about privacy issues. I published my book almost a decade ago, and people have been trying to get Congress to pass a federal privacy law that would protect our data on all of our apps and yeah. all of the different ways that we are. That'd be nice, except that's not going to happen. Uh, like, that's, the, that's never going to happen, of course mediated oh. by technology. And we're one of the only Western nations that has not passed such a bill. And so now we have, of course, this uh, frenzy around TikTok and this idea that they are the ones who we really need to be protected against. And the reality is there's really nothing that TikTok is accused of that the other social media platforms haven't done as well. Them switching over their data to Oracle, an American corporation, would, would immediately end the conversation. But of course, that's not the real reason why they're doing it. The real reason is they don't want competition, baby. That's it. The broader implications of Congress trying to uh, ban TikTok, especially in view of the fact that the United States for the last 40, 50 years has been the main proponent of globalization, of breaking down barriers between countries and letting, uh, uh, letting companies. Come on, come on. It's only globalization as it benefits us. Obviously, duh. No, not like that. We didn't realize that this was going to happen. Please stop. We made a mistake. <laughs> What's this going to do to the potential for individual countries now to begin to close their borders to trade and commerce in the digital age? I mean, this is a really good point, right? So if we put, the, the proposals on the table are A, to put TikTok under state control, to ban it, <laughs> or to force a sale. All three of those things are things that I think the U.S. government would really be mad about if some other country tried to do to one of our companies, right? Right now, already, if you think about the social media platforms and how they behave around the world. Okay, this is pretty funny because, like, technically, this is the only part of the conversation that doesn't make sense because, like, yeah, China already does that. That is actually the one part of this convo where, like, the American government could be like, "Dog, you don't let us do Twitter in China, so we're not gonna let take. We're not gonna let you do TikTok in America." You know what I mean? That part is true. To be fair, that is a valid argument to make. So let me ask you about other parts of the Restrict Act, which is co-sponsored. I mean, all of this is bipartisan in a time when the Congress couldn't be more partisan. But I'm going after China on this. You've got Senator Thune and you've got Senator I mean, that's Warner, always how it is. Of course, you know how it is. Co-sponsoring. Um, so we know that, that they want the they want TikTok to be sold to a U.S. company. But can you talk about other aspects of Restrict Act? Is it true you could face a million dollar fine if you access TikTok? And also, what does this say about restricting VPNs? And explain what they are. So this is the Restrict Bill. Um, yeah. So the Restrict Act is basically this bipartisan bill that um, has come about because the White House apparently believes that they don't actually have the legal authority to ban TikTok. So they were floating this ban and then realized that they needed the legal authority. So this bill, as far as I understand it, is actually meant to give them that legal authority that they don't feel like they have right now. Bro, I know one motherfucker that will pay the $1 million fine to see Booba. That motherfucker's name is XQC, okay? He'd be like, oh, uh, really? $1 million? Uh, how about I give you 10? So that I can look at 10 booba. There's no amount of money. 
Now, you asked me about VPNs. VPNs are um, virtual private networks. So basically, it's something you would put on your phone in order to, um, to, to route around your internet provider. It's often used in places like China, where the government is censoring internet traffic, and it's a way to try to circumvent that censorship. And so it's interesting that you would think of restricting that, when in fact, that's something we tend to export to other nations in order to pr promote freedom of expression. The bill to ban TikTok is absolutely terrifying. It gives the government the ability to go after anyone they deem as a national security risk, at which point they can access everything from their computer to video games to their ring light. This is Patriot Act for the internet. Believe it or not, it gets even worse. If you find if they find you in violation, they can put you in jail for 20 years, fine you $1 million or seize your property. They can also deem any foreign government as an adversary without informing Congress, and everything they do is not subjected to FOIA. Um, if this was about banning TikTok, they would pass a bill that simply bans TikTok. But the Uniparty is trying to create a same uh, system of domestic spying they did after 9-11, but uh, for the internet on steroids. So understand that uh, this comes with additional complications, okay? The complications are that uh, the government already has access to all of your fucking uh, uh, detailed uh, information. They How can, we use the but it's not that. It's, that's not the problem. Uh, I mean, it is a problem, but that's not one they're, they're going to solve anyway. This is just new restrictions on top of that. The internet is about to fundamentally change forever, and it's terrifying. This is Bill S-686, also known as the Restrict Bill. You'll probably know it as the TikTok ban bill, but it does so much more than just that. It actually does more than any bill I think we've ever seen. I encourage everyone to read it by going here and clicking the text tab, but here are the main takeaways. Foreign adversaries can change by definition, but a few are already listed. They are the People's Republic of China, including Hong Kong, Special Administration Region, the Republic of Cuba, the Islamic Republic of Iran, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, and of course, the Russian Federation and Venezuela under the regime of Nicolas Maduro Moros. I hope I pronounced that correctly, uh, but these definitions can change at any time. The bill covers hardware technology like modems, routers, and home cameras, and virtual tech like VPNs, and basically bans them if they are manufactured by or used to contact and deal with foreign adversaries. Speaking of VPNs, using VPNs to bypass banned apps such as TikTok is made a criminal act under this bill, and the penalty? It's a minimum imprisonment of 20 years and a minimum fine of $250,000 or $1 million, depending if you knowingly did so to access banned content. The bill gives the federal government the power to monitor any activity used by these suspected devices, virtual or otherwise. Essentially, they can monitor what you are doing at home 24-7 without even informing you. This includes things such as routers, video games, streaming apps, smart thermostats, ring cameras, basically... Wait, good luck identifying the user of the VPN to find? My friend. Oh, brother. Oh, I got something really scary to tell you. You think VPNs don't collaborate with the with the federal government when they subpoena them for information? You think VPNs actually have protect your identity on the internet? You just had a Chris D'Elia moment on the other side of that screen. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and assume that literally all fucking matter of VPN, if not the VPN, at least your ISP. Like anytime you fucking literally log on to the internet on US soil. The federal government absolutely has access to every single thing that they're talking about within this bill. And, and they can also get it from your VPN as well if they want to. I doubt that there is like actually any VPN that will protect you from the federal government if they, if they genuinely want to. NordVPN, actually, we do comply with law enforcement data requests. Especially the big VPNs certainly do collaborate with uh, the federal government. I mean, it'll be like an additional layer of privacy it's good against hackers. Um, but as far as like, if you're doing some shit illegal, uh, if you're doing some shit that's like declared illegal by the federal government, like looking at Booba on TikTok, XQC, then yeah, they will have the authority to take you down. As a matter of fact, they can even take you down if you're using the VPN in general. Basically anything that uses oh. the internet. Now, the real terrifying part of all of this, as if that all wasn't terrifying enough, is that the bill goes on to state that this will happen by the president appointing a secretary of communication. Commerce. No, that it's secretary a secretary of commerce. forms a group on their own without any voter input whatsoever. 
This group can have meetings behind closed doors. They don't have to disclose anything. They can ban and deem anything inappropriate or a risk to security at any moment in time. And if they do, they can go through your instant messages, your emails, texts, basically anything that uses the internet, and they can censor it. So in summary, this bill can effectively ban anything the government deems inappropriate extremely quickly without warning. The ramifications of this range from breaking up mass communication methods to even watching the cameras in your home, aka spying on you. It really is that bad, and I am not speaking in hyperbole. Please call. I think one of the funniest parts about it also is that TikTok isn't the only Chinese-controlled company that Americans use en masse. Valorant, Genshin, Reddit, fuck it, Twitter, League of League of Legends, Discord. There's so much Chinese money and so much Chinese control in our lives as far as like corporations.